Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video which is on the importance of using trim and why I feel you should use it regardless of what flight controller you're using. And I'm also going to be giving you some flying tips and landing tips. I know a couple of people in my Discord and YouTube channel are still having difficulty with landing and flying so I'm going to be giving you a few general tips there as well. As you can see, my Logitech Flight Yacht system is missing. In its place, I've got a simple Logitech Attack 3 joystick. I'll link one of the videos I did of that, of actually setting up trim and sensitivities. It's important you do something similar before watching this video. I'm using this joystick because a lot of new players may have a similar setup with similar button layout. And I feel a lot of people are simply not using trim. And it is quite important, as you'll see, when you're trying to fly an aircraft and trying to level it out in straight and level flight. So without further ado, let's get on with this video. Okay, so before we get to the main lesson for this video, I want to talk a little bit about trim and how it affects your aircraft. You've got various kind of trims, you've got rudder trim, aileron trim, I actually use that on my flight yacht system. So if you're banking, if you notice your aircraft is banking slightly left or right, but your flight controller is neutral, you're not touching your flight controller, you can trim so that your aircraft is now flying straight and level. And the most prevalent kind of trim, specifically in aircraft like the Cessna here, is pitch trim. Now they actually use a, a wheel for trim on aircraft like this. You move it up to trim your aircraft down, nose down. You move the uh, trim wheel down, or this way, to go nose up. We're not using a trim wheel, we're actually using buttons on our flight controller. I'm, I'm going to quickly show you the effects of this. If I dab and hold my trim down button, just for half a second or so, you can see the needle here, this is our airspeed indicator, it's now actually starting to make our aircraft, if I hold it for a second or two, just half a second, you can now see that our aircraft is descending. If I trim nose up, so holding the button for trim nose up, now you can see that needle going back towards the zero, and we're going to start rising. I'm going to talk about this more in the main lesson, main lesson and the importance of it. So let's now get to our lesson. Okay, so on the main menu of Flight Simulator 2020, we're going to set up a very, very simple flight. I'm going to click on World Map. I'm over the UK, if you're not, and you're going to follow this, scroll till you get, or move the world till you get over the UK, scroll in till you see Heathrow. It's a big airport, so it should show in the southeast of England here. Just click on it, and go set as departure. Now, by default, I've noticed, let's zoom in on that, it will set us up on runway 27 right, so we're taking off from, towards the west rather. And our flight plan is that we take off, go around Windsor Castle here, turn back 180 degrees and land back on this runway. Very, very simple. So you just click on Heathrow and click set as departure. And it will put us, like I say, as default on that runway oh, 27 right because I clicked set as departure twice there, but never mind. By default, it will put you on this runway, taking off in a westerly heading. Time of day, I would put roughly about between 12 noon and 2 o'clock. So around this time is fine for me. And that's because you don't want the sun setting or rising when you're flying, because it will start to affect our sight when we're trying to line up with the airport, especially you don't want the sun blazing in your eyes. So roughly around that time is fine. We're going to be flying in the Cessna 152. So if you haven't got that selected, 
select the Cessna 152 and flight conditions I would advise either clear skies, few clouds or scattered clouds. I like scattered clouds because I like the look of it. We don't want anything too severe. It will start to affect our vision of where we need to go and even we'll get some environmental effects which we don't want. So scattered clouds is fine or clear skies or something of that sort. So let's go fly. So here we are, lined up at Heathrow Airport in our Cessna 152. I'm going to press the end key on my keyboard to get back in the cockpit. Couple of things I want to talk about here. By default, this aircraft will load you in with stage 1 flaps or 10 degrees of flaps. We've got quite a long uh, runway here. We don't need flaps for this runway and in fact to follow what I'm doing I would suggest and recommend that you raise flaps completely. We certainly don't need flaps down at all on this runway so I'm raising them we don't have any flaps at all. A couple of other things on the top tab here move your mouse to the top go to the weather option and remove that bottom wind layer see this icon here I'll show my video in the top right of why I don't like this and why I remove it left click on that and just left click delete layer now that bottom wind layer is gone thankfully and we can close that few other things we've got our airspeed indicator now I'm gonna go full throttle in a moment when it reaches 60 knots and beyond, I'm going to pull back gently to take off. I'm going to try and hold at 75 knots. I'm going to try and climb at, a, at an airspeed of 75 knots, which will be pretty much your sort of standard uh, climb rate. So when we take off, I'm going to hold my joystick back or push it forward or whatever is necessary to maintain that 75 knot climb. Our altitude here, you can see Heathrow Airport is 100 feet above sea level. I want to climb to an altitude of 1,000 feet. So basically, we'll have to get that little hand on the 1, which will be 1,000, and this big hand back on the 1 as well, which will be 1,100 feet, which will be 1,000 feet above our runway height. And the other thing we want to pay attention to, and I'll talk more about this in flight, is our airspeed indicator, our vertical speed indicator rather. As you can see, the needle is, is on zero at the moment. Because we're on a runway, we're neither descending or uh, as ascending or increasing altitude. If we're increasing altitude, you'll notice that needle will be up here somewhere to show us that we're increasing in altitude. If we're descending, you'll notice the needle will be down here. To get to straight and level flight, which I'll show you in a moment, you want that needle to be pointing towards the zero. So with those basic things out of the way, let's go full throttle, release our parking brake, Keeping an eye on our airspeed indicator when we reach 60 knots, we'll pull back gently to take off and try and hold in the in the climb at 75 knots. So there's 60, let's pull back gently. And I'm just going to try and hold that 75 knot climb a bit high there, so I'll release the pressure of my holding the joystick back a bit more back that's not too bad that's not too bad that will do takes a bit of practice to do this but just hold enough pressure on your joystick for now in the climb you can see our altitude we're coming somewhere towards that 1000 feet when we get to about the 8 there, I'll relieve the pressure and try and level out our aircraft. And for this first part, I'm not going to use trim. And it's something I used to do back in the day. And I'll show you why trim is quite good to use. Okay, so we're coming we're coming towards our files of here. I'm going to relieve the pressure on my joystick and see what the aircraft wants to do. It's likely wanting to rise because I'm at full throttle. So I'm going to decrease my throttle. 
and move my joystick forward to try and get in level climb and you can see how messy this is and it's possibly what a lot of you are doing at the moment you're decreasing your throttle moving your joystick or flight controller forward or backwards to try and get to level flight eventually you can do it but you'll be decreasing the throttle so much that it's just a messy way of doing it now I'm gonna start using my trim and show you how easy this is I'm dabbing I want to get wins the cattle to our right slightly so I'm just banking left I'm dabbing my trim nose down and as you can see that needle here is going back towards that zero I'm just clicking possibly hear that trim nose trim nose down to try and get us in a level flight now we've come over our assigned altitude I want that big hand to be back on the one so I'm dabbing literally just dabbing half a second on that trim nose down to put the aircraft in a trim nose down stature so a little bit more or configuration <laughs> why the words fail me as soon as I start recording it's a curse of a youtuber's life I'm afraid anyway I'm trimming down just dabbing the trim nose down so configuring our aircraft to descend so I can get back to our assigned altitude here winds the castle we want that to pass behind our aircraft you can see we're on a westerly heading we'll turn after that's passed behind us and head back towards the east to get a view of Heathrow Airport again and land on the same runway we've just taken off from so now you can see uh, altitude is coming back towards I'm going trim nose up pressing the button for trim nose up now just clicking it and clicking down again to make try and get that needle on the zero don't chase it let the aircraft settle I can see it's settling in a slightly down configuration so I'm just clicking trim nose up and you can see it's a lot easier to do this to get to our assigned altitude that's gonna be about right we're about rightly trimmed out there I'm just gonna pull my throttle back a little bit because about one eighth and I'll have to trim up again because the aircraft will want to descend once I've done that just so we're not over speeding go to our make sure I've got just bear with me Go to our right view there, you can see Windsor Castle passing now beyond our window. I'm going to let it pass beyond our aircraft and then start turning right. As I start turning right, let's just click trim nose up so we're properly trimmed out there. As I tur start turning right, you'll notice our aircraft will want to start to descend. You'll notice this needle will start pointing downwards a bit. I'm going to use trim just to help with that trim on a virtual aircraft doesn't work quite as well as when you're flying the real thing of course so you're gonna have to take that and keep that into consideration when you're turning in a real Cessna they're probably not using trim when they're turning but we're not we're using a very simple flight controller and I help I find that trim when I'm turning to keep our aircraft nicely trimmed out does help so there you go Windsor Castle is right behind us now so let's start turning to the right about a 30 degree bank of turn I'm keeping an eye on my altitude and that needle here you can see it's going to want to start coming down now so I'm just clicking trim nose up as I'm turning just to keep our aircraft nicely trimmed Coming towards the north now, north pointer on the compass, we want to get towards that east. You'll start to see Windsor Castle appearing in our view again soon. As I'm concentrating on the airspeed, vertical speed indicator and our altitude to make sure we're not dropping too much altitude and that we're maintaining sort of uh, we're maintaining our altitude as well. 
So Windlesley Castle should appear in our view. There it comes. And beyond that, we should start to see Heathrow Airport. The runway we just basically taken off from, which is there, in fact. So I can now start to come out of our turn. Back to straight and level again. Keep an eye on what the aircraft's doing. It's wanted to go nose up, so I'm just trimming nose down to try and trim it back out again. We're still a bit far from the runway to start worrying about landing. At this point, don't panic. Nice, smooth movements all the way, in fact. Just don't panic. Your aircraft will want to look after you if you treat it nicely. So gentle dabs on your trim if you're trimming. Gentle turns if you're turning. I wasn't using rudder. I don't have my rudder pedals connected for this flight because I'm putting my flight equipment in a configuration that many people may have. You may not have rudder pedals or rudder controls. So I'm not using them in this flight. Just keep that in mind. This is possibly what a lot of you are using at home. Just a simple flight joystick or flight controller. Well, even the Xbox controller works well with this as well. We'll let Windsor Castle pass us by here. And then what we'll do is go 10 degrees of flaps, stage 1 flaps. Now when I do that you'll notice the... Let's just pause this, active pause it. You'll notice the nose of the aircraft will want to go up unrealistically, I find, with Flight Simulator 2020. It still wants to go up quite a way. I counter that with a bit of trim nose down. So once the nose starts wanting to go up, once I'm in flaps, I trim the aircraft back out again. I'll show you that in a moment. Windsor Castle is passing us by. I'm just lining up with our runway there. Plenty of time. Don't panic. <laughs> Don't panic, Mr. Mannering. You've got plenty of time to do this. Let's go stage one flaps. So yeah, what I want to do is get my airspeed down a bit. So I'm coming back on my throttle. Just over halfway now. Maybe two thirds on my throttle. Two thirds throttle, rather. The aircraft I want to descend, so I'm just going to trim out using the trim buttons, just dabbing them. And let's go stage one flaps. 10 degrees of flaps. Using my trim buttons immediately, just holding my trim nose down at, for a, a fraction of a second there. And now clicking trim nose up just to trim our aircraft out. Don't worry about your flight controller, your joystick. Don't be touching that at the moment. I only need to line up the uh, airport or runway. As you can see, we've decreased our airspeed nicely. We want to start descending slowly, so that needle is correct. We are descending. Let's just active pause this again. Press spacebar so we get above the nose of our aircraft. I'm envisioning this nose of the aircraft, the front of the aircraft here, to touch down on the th threshold of the runway there takes a bit of practice but if you can envision that so when you're in normal view the nose is a bit ahead of us I'm envisioning us touching down here I'm gonna go another stage of flaps now again the aircraft want to go nose up but I'm just using trim to counter that from here on in Last stage of flaps before I do that. We are at full flaps, never mind. Lap from here on in, I'm not using trim any longer. I'm using my throttle to control our ascending, our ascent or descent, basically. So if I feel at the moment it's looking nice and our airspeed's looking quite nice as well. If I feel I'm not descending enough, I will pull my throttle back. If I feel I'm ascending or climbing, I will, sorry, ascending, I will pull my throttle back. So if I'm climbing, I'll pull my throttle back. If I'm descending too much, I'll increase my throttle and control it that way. At the moment, it's just nicely balanced. You do have pappy lights here at Heathrow. I'm going to ignore it for this lesson. That's more advanced. If you've got two white and two red like I have there, you'll bang on target, target for a good landing, basically. 
But I'm going to ignore them for the rest of this lesson. I'm not going to chase the Pappy Lights. That's more advanced. I'm just going to use my throttle here. Line up with the runway again. Just to control our descent into the airport. So I'm just moving my throttle down slightly because I want to descend more now. The threshold of the airport, of the runway, is coming closer. A little bit more. Once we're over that runway, I've got my hand on the controller. I'm actually using, pulling back on my joystick just to control our descent as well. I've now put my throttle fully back. I've got my hand on the actual joystick just to float over the runway so we come nice and smoothly to a nice landing and there you go so no panic at all so listen i hope that's been of help to you leave your questions and comments in the comment section below join the discord server with lots of knowledgeable people there and we're always discussing procedures and other things like that in discord so come and join us there give the video a like if it's been helpful to you subscribe for more more videos are coming out and i'll see you soon